Hello, everyone in Oregon and beyond. <clears throat> Happy October. At least, it's the beginning of October when I'm recording this. And welcome to my latest project. Bowser Flame and Fury. An SNS 4D coaster that cost us $45 million. <laughs> We're no stranger to huge budgets at this park. Um, so why don't we have a look around and get started? This coaster is best at night, but yeah, it's the middle of the day. I figured I'd start filming now. Yeah, they don't call it Flame and Fury for nothing. There is a ton of fire in and around this thing. So, uh, let's get started with some statistics. It's right open in 2017. It's SNS's latest uh, non free spin 4D coaster. <clears throat> First one they've made since they've started building free spins. Original is better, right? So, this thing takes you up 206 feet, drops you 248 feet at an 89 and a half degree angle. Don't know why that. Distinction is important, but it's there. Your top speed is going to be 82 miles an hour. It's going to take you through 4,673.6 feet of track. With three track inversions. Although, I'm not sure how many seat inversions there are. Um, so, let's get started with the tour. So, this is our awesome sign. Nintendo is very proud of it. Uh, if you go over here, you got your free lockers. Um, yeah, not as many as Daybreak would eventually go on to have. But Daybreak's loose article policy would end up being a lot more strict. Um, you'll be happy to know we have since relaxed it a little bit and have discontinued the metal detectors. And we have moved the pouches to the back of each seat. So it's quicker, it's easier. We don't really have a problem with people losing anything or getting hit with phones. And we don't have to have the line roads, which frees up uh, ride operators for other things. Uh, this is your bathrooms. There's a ton of them. So don't have to really worry about running out, out of stalls. <laughs> Cedar Point. <laughs> Um, going around this way to uh, the entrance of the ride, um, you'll see our esteemed queues. And I say esteemed because we use speed rail, and everyone knows speed rail is the best. Kings Island uses it. That tells you all you need to know. It's everywhere in that park. So. We have two sides, Easy Goon Standby, each of which will have their own entrance. Um, I'll take you through the Easy Q entrance real quick, kind of show you around. Show you some key times. In each line is all the way back to the entrance with um, no switchbacks open. Then that's a solid app with three train operation. And th obviously this is not exact, as with any ride. It'll depend on several things. It could be faster, it could be slower, but this is what you would put on your sign at an entrance. Um, or the, this is what you would call in, we put on the TVs. Um, going through easy queue down here, you go down and into the castle. Um, getting started, you're going to start with opening this one and then progressing down that way. Um, and then you're going to open this 
and then open those few. And then when those fill up, if you need to open more, which is going to happen a lot during haunt events, you're going to open up this one, and then you're going to start opening these up over here. So what do you put down on the easy queue? So, and anyone can see the line and call it in each hour. So, basically, if easy queue is out to this bend right here, leave it as 15 minutes. If it's out to that bend down there, it's 45. If it's, see this bend right here, if it's out to this bend right here, or 30, I mean, it's 45. And then full queue is an hour. Um, start going over switchbacks real quick. Uh, and obviously if the queue line's not full, you can interpolate from there, but the queue time's assuming Line still all the way back to the entrance. This switch back right here is another 10 minutes. And these two are here another 15. So you have 70, 85, 100 minutes. This thing right here is another five minutes, so 105 minutes. And then this one's 15 minutes, and each one decreases, uh, going down by two and a half each time. So, this one's another 15 minutes, so 120 minutes if this is open. Uh, 132 and a half, 142 and a half, and then 150 minutes. So if these and these are full and the lines all the way back to the entrance, it's 150 minutes, so two and a half hours. And then let's go back down here. This one's open, it's another 15 minutes, so 165 minutes. And then you're gonna start with this one going that way. Each of these are five minutes. The rest of those are 10. So, 170, 175. And then each of these are 10. 185, 195. 205, 215. So the full queue holds 215 minutes of queue time. And that's going to get you 108 minutes. It's 35. So two, three hours and 35 minutes is a full queue. And it will happen during haunt events. This thing is really popular. All the villain coasters are. This infinite scrap brain. Basically anything having to do with a villain is obviously going to jump in popularity. And Flame and Fury being the way it is, and the park being mostly at night, this being the ride that pops the most at night, yeah, you're going to get full queues, mostly, on those days. So let's walk into the castle. I'm going to show you at least one side. You'll end up getting to see both sides. It's a split, so if the queue is over three hours, you can pretty much say no to preferred sides. Because obviously we have to keep the sides even. So going through the rest of the queue. There's gonna be a merge station right here. So goes to one wing, this goes to the other. Let's see. 
I'll take you through this one first. And then when I go over grouper, I'll take you to the other side. Then you go up the stairs here. So here's the station. You'll be standing here for uh, grouper. We've got monitors, because why not? Hit my arm on something. Um, and then we'll take 38 gate here. Your control booth is up there. That's the other side. Pretty much identical. Go ahead and open that for you. Step through here. And then you can go up this way to the control booth. This is your ADA elevator. There's one on the other side, too. So, yes, uh, non ambulatory can ride both wings. We'll go down here. So, exiting out the castle, there's your elevators again. Um, go ahead and get the. This is the birch store. To the friends in retail. Some of them could be positioned here. And yeah, when the ride first opened, we needed all of those. All of those stations open because, <laughs> trust me, these merch lines would get long. And then here's photos. Your picture is taken um, right before the outside Raven turn. So pretty close to the end of the ride. That one for the other side, too. And then... It'll go out this way. And then... Back out to the rest of the park, even though it's a bit of a long walk. It's a very big path, very open station. Alright. Uh, as we're walking back, it's going to be a bit of a walk, so go ahead and get started with some general ride information. So X2 is an SNS 4D. It's got the pickle spoon trains. Um, nice and lightweight, nice fiberglass shell. Trains are seven cars each, hold 28 people. Um, we can run up to three trains on this, provided we have six people on platform checking seats. And we go down to two trains, which you usually do on weekdays and off peak times. Um, we can go down to two people, four or even two. Uh, usually we'll have four. But we can go down to two if we have two trains or one train. The only time you'll really see one train on this is if the weather's icky. Or if we're operating in heavy rain. So let's go back to the entrance here. Uh, the height requirement is 48 inches. <clears throat> there is, to my knowledge, no maximum height requirement. 
Uh, this is an Easy Q Plus ride. So, if you have regular Easy Q, you can only use it for this once a day. If you have Easy Q Plus ride, you are subject to the normal Easy Q Plus uh, restrictions for the rolling one hour window. Um, this is a typical no loose article policy. If it doesn't fit in your pockets and it's not a water bottle, it has to be left in the lockers. And then anything you have with you other than shoes and water bottles rides with you. Cannot be left in the cell for Shubins. Shubins are for shoes only. Um, for extremities, you need one arm and one leg. Or you need both arms and one leg. Leg has to be down to the knee. Uh, this can be bypassed if you ask for the full body harness. Uh, the full body harness is a special harness that can be tied onto the back of the train. For those who do not meet the extremity requirements, but meet all the other requirements. So you need two functioning arms, one functioning legs. Anything less than that requires the supplemental, requires the uh, full body harness. That's pretty much it for uh, overall rider requirements. Just, this has some light effects, utilizes magnetics, and <clears throat> there's obviously fire and fog effects, so if you're sensitive to any of that, then I would recommend skipping. Um, before we start going over individual positions, let's go over the paperwork that you may encounter for this ride. Um, so, first are the alternate axis paths. You have green and yellow. Green is the normal. Uh, yellow is the plan your day. So the normal, how that works, is you go up to the entrance here. Uh, they will give you a time equal to the wait time plus the current time. Or if you bought an easy queue, it's equal to the easy queue time plus the equal to the easy queue time plus the current time. So let's say the line is two hours. It's four o'clock on a Saturday. You can come back at six and ride. There is no front row um, invitation for this because it's leading and trailing. There's no true front row on this. People don't usually request it. Yeah, let's say at the same time, easy as 45 minutes, then you'd come back at 4.45 instead. Keep in mind, in order to utilize that, the entire group has to have Easy Q, and they have to have Easy Q Plus. Otherwise, they just get it once. Uh, plan your day. You have the yellow sheet. You have a standard interval. So, you'll be given this interval at the beginning of the day and after each ride you get one freebie basically at the beginning of the day and then you'll be waiting a standard interval between rides depending on the day this can be as low as five minutes or it can be as long as 180 minutes if you have easy queue this wait time is cut down by one two thirds so if it's an hour it will be 20 minutes instead uh, Flame and Fury has two limitations due to its popularity on this. Uh, first of all, um, you can only ride it once using the standard interval. After that, the current wait time has to have passed from your last ride before you can ride it again. Uh, in addition, uh, Flame and Fury cannot be your first ride of the day. That is with all Easy Q Plus rides. 
if you have regular easy queue, uh, same, you can use it once with the easy queue interval and once with the regular interval. After that, the wait time has to have passed. Um, and then if you have easy queue plus, then you can use it once with the easy queue interval, or you can use it once with a reduced time interval. And then after that, the easy queue time has to have passed. <clears throat> before you can ride it again. Um, there are no casts allowed on this. None. No casts, and any prosthetics have to be removed. And basically, if you have a brace it has, or boot, it has to be taken off. Uh, item tickets. Every so often, someone's going to slip by you. Burge catches it, or grouper. You get sent back out, put their item away, and then they redeem it through the easy queue lot. They wait the easy queue wait, and then they go back up. And last but not least, Parent Swap. It's Mario themed. You're gonna want, you're gonna have kids who want to ride, who may not be tall enough. So if that happens, Parent does a Parent Swap. So they take the purple sheet, all but two of their group wait in the normal queue. Once they ride, they hand the purple sheet off to Grouper. And then Grouper will let their group in. they will let the other two people in. So they'll swap with each other. So they can ride while the other guys watch the kid. Uh, we're ditching the date on, on it. So it's just got their name. <clears throat> the date doesn't really matter. We're trying to save paper. Everyone knows how it works. It's hard to mess up. So, that is basically it. I will finish off the general information portion by saying that if you have anything important and you don't have zipper pockets, leave it in the locker. It's free. Don't take it on the ride with you because this thing will spill everything out of your pockets. The reason we still allow items in your pockets on this is because you don't really interact. This thing doesn't really give any chances for people to get hit by loose articles. And as you could probably see, any spot where you possibly could get hit, that's pretty covered. Like, it's not going to hit the midway anywhere. And yeah, I've seen uh, people's items get incinerated by the flamethrowers, too. Sucks to suck. Oh well. In case you're worried about the lava pits, by the way, there's a plexiglass. Can't really see it, but there's a plexiglass uh, coating over it. So if it hits that, item's gonna hit that. It won't do anything. You'll occasionally see a phone or something sitting over the lava. It's funny. All right, let's get started with the individual positions. So. Entrance! You have two of them. One for regular, one for here. Um, after we cut platform positions, uh, we will cut an entrance. So yeah, we can run with a minimum of seven people, run with a maximum of twelve. If this happens, um, rotations from entrance are going to be done through breaks, other, and then we do platform rotations. Otherwise, rotations are going to be done every 30 minutes as usual. If you want to sit here, that's fine. Make sure the other person is okay with it. You don't cause any issues. So as usual, you take your height stick, sit here, be friendly, enforce rider requirements. Um... If you see any bags, obviously don't let them in. 
and every so often uh, call the wait time up to the park ops office. You have an A phone over here, you have a park phone over here. It's the park phone, dial park ops, call it up to them every hour. So we can update it on the TVs and the app. <clears throat> so, I don't know what else you want to see. This is your view from one entrance chair. And this is your view from the other entrance chair. This is the one that usually that scans in easy cues. You scan here, and then you scan at the merge point. The scan scanner here will tell you how many scans you have left. And then the scanner up there, provided this one's also been scanned, will scan and deplete one of your scans for the rolling hour. It'll also deplete your scan for regular easy cue for the day. If the ride poops itself, then visit the Park Ops office. Talk to them about it. They might rectify the situation, get you another scan. So yeah, that's basically all you do at entrance. Just entrance things. Alright, let's go. Go this side this time. We're gonna go up to merge. The rotations are gonna be exactly as we're rotating. Almost. Um, so it's you're gonna spend an hour at entrance, and then you're gonna go up and you're gonna bump merge, and then you're gonna go up to left wing. You're gonna do left grouper, and then you're gonna rotate front to back for left wing. And then you're going to rotate to operator. <clears throat> and then you're going to rotate to controls, I mean. And then after controls, you're going to do bars again. This time you're going to go back to front. And then you're going to do grouper on the right wing. And then you're going to rotate back down to entrance. It's actually fairly straightforward. Nice. As for safeties that can get you, there aren't any. <clears throat> and then... You'll see why in a little bit. As complicated as the restraint system is, checking it is actually very straightforward. You just gotta make sure their belt is in and the light's green. That's it. <clears throat> and that there's no cast or anything, but trust me, you've got several layers. Speaking of layers of protection, here's your merge station. Got a light right here. You have an A-phone, you have your hide stick, you have your seat. You sit here, and you assign people to go either to the left wing or the right wing. Now, as for how many, um, I would say for the left wing, see here, right here, do it till they get to here, and then the right wing stop them when they get halfway down the tunnel. And then once you see it, and then once you see left wing disappear around the corner, go ahead and send your next for a bit. Um, other than that, that's basically it. You're just looking for the same things that entrances. Make sure EasyQ scans their scan. Um, and that's the right color and logo. Don't forget that. That's basically it. Here's your view from Grouper. You're inside, mostly protected from the elements, unless it's raining in this way. <laughs> At which point, if you nestle yourself like into the corner right here, you won't get hit. 
but you also won't see anybody, so you kind of have to come back out here to talk to people. So yeah, it, it's like a 10 minute wait on each side with three trains, even with two, it's not that long. Alright, so I took you up this side last time, right? So I'm going to take you up this side so you can see what's on this side. Yeah, there's really not much for Grouper to do that's different from entrance. If you want people to rotate around you back there, that's fine. Make sure they're okay with it when they come over. If they want, if they're rotating in and they want Grouper, or they want Merge, you gotta let them have Merge. Sorry, boss. <clears throat> All right, Grouper. You saw where they stand over there. This is where you stand over here. So basically, you're going to assign rows. This is mostly a soft assign. Once the line reaches three hours, which it will during hot, like I've said, then uh, no preferred seating. Uh, you're also in charge of ADA from here. This is your gate. Uh, all of your ADA will come through here, whether they come up the stairs or up the elevator. So, after each of them get their return time, and they'll come up here, you're going to look at their sheet. Uh, if it's a green sheet, this is a regular one, you're going to cross it off. If it's a plan your day sheet, you're going to write in the ride, and then you're going to write the next time they can ride a ride after. Based on the interval. So one, so after that, you can let them in through here, and then you can let them into the rows. Um, someone requests a row, you can have like wait in the side, but you're not usually going to have too many people requesting rows. Um, if you want, you can put them in that row, but please don't have more than two train loads at a time waiting for a row. And it shouldn't be too hard, even with three trains, to get all these rows filled. Uh, you still have your height stick and your height stand. You know how the height stand works by now. You swing that around. If it hits their head solid, they're good. Um, you just do that. Load front to back, back to front. However you really want to do it. Want to do a practice run? Is it, I know this might be a little different, so let's do a practice run. Alright. As soon as the this train leaves, we'll take over and do a little practice run real quick. And across the track, you're just going to go through the output. We'll do it a couple times during this training. All clear. We are currently running three trains at as, as it is a Sunday during hot and yeah, it's pretty busy. All right, hi, how many? All right, go ahead to go ahead to rows one and two. Uh, how many? All right, go to row three. How many? All right, go to row four, single and five. How many here? Uh, go to row seven. How many here? Uh, three. Go to row six and single in five to join that single. Thank you. Hi. All right, give me a pass. Okay, how many you got? All righty. Uh, do you have any preference of where you want to go? All right, somewhere in the middle. All right, I'll get you taken care of as soon as these guys board.
Hey, sir. Just so you know, all that stuff has to ride with you. You can only leave your shoes in the shoe bins. Your water bottle can stay on the side, though. All right, thank you. I know, sorry, it's park policy. All right. You guys go ahead. You're gonna go to rows three and four, please. Uh, once you board, you can go ahead and leave the wheelchair right here. And it'll be waiting for you when you get back. All right, how many we got in here? Uh, six. Uh, go ahead to five, six, and seven. Five, six, and seven. Uh, how many you got? Two. Go ahead to row one. How many you got? Four. Okay, how many you got? Four again. All right, can I have a group of two, please? Group of two. We have group of two. All right, go ahead and come on up, guys. Uh, you're going to go to row two. Keep in mind the two sides run independent from each other. So what you do on this side isn't going to be affected by what they do over there. Unless, of course, the ride goes down. You know. Parent swap? All right, I'll take that. Um, go ahead and get your group ready. I'll get you guys on the next one. All right, um, you four, go ahead to one and two, please. Uh, you four, go ahead to three and four. And how many you got? Um, five. Go ahead to five, six, and seven. Uh, do we have any single riders? Single riders. Do we have any single riders? Anybody riding by themselves? All right. Oh well. You're gonna have an empty seat or occasionally have an empty seat or two. Uh, try and make sure there is not more than one per train, but sometimes it's out of your control. All right. Um. You too. Uh, do you have any preference on where you want to go? Okay, you want the back. All right. All right, go ahead. All right, you guys can go ahead and back here. Uh, how many you got? Two. Okay, you want the back? Uh, you okay with waiting one more train? All right. Uh, go ahead and wait behind these two, please. Uh, how many you got? Eight. You want front or middle? Front. <laughs> front. Okay. All right, go ahead and one, two, three, and four. Uh, how many you guys got? Six? All right, we're going to have you on the next one. You guys got four or less? You got four. Okay, perfect. Come on in. Uh, go ahead to rows five and six, please. All right. Go ahead and hand the height stick back to our grouper over here. We're going to go in and do bars. Mm -hmm. We're going to do your rotating a little backwards. Usually it's from that side over to here. But we're going to start over here. All right, so we're going to start you off at enable right. Mail, <laughs> obviously, it's pretty simple. You have your E stop and your 
enable button. You're going to hold that down all the way until the next train parks and the platform rises all the way up to the train. So this out here is the restraint release. Uh, there's two buttons. This is for the outside seat, this is for the inside seat. Let's get out of the way because they're going to dispatch the train in a second. It's identical on the other side. Uh, all you have to do is push that down and then the restraint will unlock. You can use that anytime anyone needs to adjust the restraint or switch seats. It's pretty easy. Pretty easy means you don't have to yell up to controls to do it. Mm -mm. It's pretty nice. Um, so, to check the restraint, it's the butterfly harness that uh, these 4D coasters are famous for. <laughs> Pretty interesting. So the guests that sound, they slide their arms in the side, and then they can pull it down and they can pull it in. So in order to check their strength, you're gonna start over here. You're gonna go, you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna pull it up, and then you're gonna tug in the belt. So out, up, belt, and you're gonna go here. out, up, belt out, up, belt. And then you're going to come back here. You're going to do your scan. For their clear. And then go ahead and put up a high clear. And hold your button. You're going to keep your high clear up until the train starts moving. And then now you can put it down. This is the only position with a de facto safe zone. All the, the others have walking safe zones. So go ahead and try a few. Make sure you're staying out of the way here. Uh, controls is going to be the one closing the gates, so you don't have to worry about that either. All, literally all you're doing most of the time is hitting the advance and dispatch button. All right, hi, arms up, please. Okay, out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Out, up. Okay, needs a little bit of help. And, all right, got your belt for you. Awesome. Go ahead and go back here. Go ahead and check the monitors, but most of the time you're not going to have any issues. All it has to do is be belt fasten and push down like one click. All clear. Out they go. Stay by the panel when everyone's coming in. That way you're out of the way. <clears throat> Strings are locked. Alright. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. All right, go ahead and unlock. Go ahead and hit the left button. And release. All right, it's locked. Go ahead and check the inside seat first. Out, up, belt. Very good. Out, up, belt. Perfect. All right, everyone's back in their safe zone. All clear. Cool. Uh, let's rotate up to load two. Load two, right.
you can get kind of a look at the rack and pinion system. See those little smaller set of wheels down there? That controls the rolling. Uh, for a bump rotation, the person rotating it will take over your position. Wait back here until the gates close. That, that way you're out of the way. Alright, let's go ahead and rotate up here. You're going to start... You're going to always start out here between the bins. You're going to check these two rows here. And then, you're going to flip these two bins. Start out here, and then you're going to go there, dispatch the train, and then as the next train's coming in, you're going to flip those two bits. All right, let's try it. All right, everyone's going in. Awesome. Obviously, if you're not an enable, you're going to be putting out a little clear, too. Strains are locked. All right, hands up, please. Out, up, in. Out, up. Belt. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. And then you're going to go here. Clear. And put out your low clear. All clear. Now hold it, hold it, hold it, and all right, you can release your clear. Stay in this spot until the train is fully out of the station, and then as it's rolling in, go ahead over here, go ahead and flip this bin, being careful to stay behind the old line, and then go ahead and flip this bin. If you cross that line, it is a safety demerit, so make sure you're staying behind this line, but yeah, it makes things a whole lot more efficient. All right, hands up, please. All right, out, up, pull. 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 Okay, uh, all right, restraint is released. Go ahead and just, all right, hands up, out, up, pull. All right, cool. Here, scan, and clear. All clear. All right, we're going to do one more after this, then we'll rotate. Hey, John, can you get the DOR, please? Thank you. Our readout's broken. Grounds to flip the bins. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Woo. There you go. It happens. It happens. Okay. Alright, hands up. Out, up, pull. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. 
Gotta be vigilant. <laughs> it happens, it happens. I forget bins sometimes. Mostly because I'm doing other things. Signing exit passes or talking to guests. Guests can be really distracting, aren't they? Alright. Clear. All clear. The reason we do it this way is because that way you can get in your safe zone. Dispatch train. You have plenty of room in the platform. All right, flip this one. Flip this one. And then just wait here until everyone boards. All right, hands up, please. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Just, okay. Hands up, out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. All right. Clear, clear, clear. All clear. Oops, we exhale. Where are we supposed to rotate? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> oh, we did an extra cycle. Doesn't hurt anyone. Flip, quick, flip the bins. That's why you practice, right? All right. Actually, you're going to be starting from here, too. We're going to load one, left and right. This is going to be the bin you flip. Um, you don't have to worry about alternate access. Making sure wheelchairs are out of the way. Are any hands up, please? Out, up, belt. 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 Make sure you're sitting in this corner so that the operators can see you. Go ahead and put out your clear as soon as you're ready. All clear. Don't forget to walk up and flip the bin. There you go. I know it's a new concept. Y'all are used to pressure pads. We took the, we're actually starting to remove those from most of our rides and replace it with a system similar to this because it's so much more efficient and it doesn't decrease safety at all. All right, hands up, please. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Oh, sorry. All right, should be unlocked. Go ahead and pull up on it. All right, thank you. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Clear. All clear. All right, do one more after this and then we'll rotate to the other side. I'm gonna have you do one cycle each over there. 
so you can get used to the other side. I don't want to. I don't want to do the full. Unlike other coasters, where it's loaded on the other side, on wing coasters, I only have you do one cycle on the other side because it's literally identical. Unless, of course, there's some reason it's not. Oh, you forgot to flip the bin. Oh no, you're stuck here now. The other way, over here. Whoopsie. Alright. Hands up. Out, up, belt. 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 Clear. All clear. As you can probably tell, dispatch interval is really fast on this. Bottom of the drop. Bottom of the first drop is the third is the uh, three train interval. Flip. Okay, there we go. We got it. All right. Let's go ahead and go over to the other side. All right. Let's get one perfect cycle on each side. No, you're not going to group her. Wrong gate. You're also going to check the... Don't forget to check the gate. Go and walk up to this side. Alright. We're going to do one cycle each position. And then we're going to rotate it into controls. Yeah. Wing coasters, so they're identical. So I'm only having you do one. Hands up, please. Out, up, belt. 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 Okay, it's unlocked. Sorry, buddy. Alright. And fast the belt. Pull on it. Check the gate. Clear. All clear. Forget to flip the bin, oh no. Alright. We're gonna try it again. Show me a perfect cycle. We gotta remember to flip the bin. Alright, hands up please. Out a belt. Out a belt. Out up belt. 
out, up, belt, out, up, belt, out, up, belt. All right, go ahead and check the gate. All right, clear. All clear. All right, train is all the way out. Go ahead. There you go. And flip the bin. Yes. <clears throat> we did it. We remembered. All right, one for low two. All right, hands up, please. Out, up, belt. Out, up, belt. Go ahead and release it from left button. All right, there you go. All right, out, up, belt. You got now? Out, up, belt. Clear. All clear. Oh, it's going to take some getting used to. All right, trains out. And flip this one. And go ahead and flip this one. Yay! We remembered. <laughs> See, I'm learning too. This is the first ride that we're, we actually have this. Every ride from now on will have this kind of thing going. All right, just wait till they load. Then we'll rotate back to enable for one cycle real quick. All right, wait for them to send the train. I'll rotate in. And then from here, but on the other side, then you rotate out this gate right here and go to the Clear. Clear. All clear. Go ahead and do your usual enable thing. There's not really much to it. You don't have to remember to flip any bins back here. Alright, hands up, please. Out, up, in, out, up, belt. It's unlocked. Out, up, uh, belt. Sir, can I take your boot, please? All right. I'm going to put it right here next to the bin, okay? You can't wear it during the ride. Out, up, uh, belt. All clear. Don't forget to hold the button down the whole time. Okay. 
keep holding it. Keep holding it till the restraint's open. Alright. Let's go through here. Let's go to controls. Alright, welcome to controls. You've got probably the best view of any control booth menu station. You can see pretty much anything from here. You can see, you can even see load one in their safe zone. Designed it that way. You can see every row. See the monitors too, but you've also got the display on your panel. There's an A phone and a park phone. You got your fire extinguisher. You gotta make sure that's checked once a month. So, to check it, you do it during opening procedures. You take it off the wall. You turn it upside down. There's a thing on there that you sign. You initial it. The label is upside down. That's because you're supposed to sign it while it's inverted. And then you turn it back upright, put it back on the wall. Uh, water's on each side. Um, for ice, you're going to get your ice. There is an ice chest behind the bathrooms. And then... There is a faucet down in the storage areas in the castle down there, so where you can fill those up. So everything's here. You got an ice chest behind the bathrooms. We're going to be moving that soon to in here, too, as soon as we can make space. So, um... Yeah, it's controls. You ask for the DOR every hour because our readout is broken for whatever reason. Usually you're going to have a DOR readout to the control booth. You also make sure entrance uh, calls through wait times and you're going to call entrance to make sure they rotate. Or you're going to announce platform rotations if we're doing platform rotations. If we are doing platform rotations, uh, and you're at grouper. Uh, grouper is just going to rotate around the other side. Um, so this is your panel. It's a con sign, as it usually is, because con signs are beautiful, and we forced them also to make sure this was as efficient as possible. So you got your panel enabled, uh, that controls panel controls, obviously. <laughs> Didn't know how else to word that. You have your operation modes. If you operate in manual mode, then you do manual block releases. Transfer mode, you transfer trains. And what's nice about this booth is you got a window back here, so you can watch the train transfers happening. It's awesome. Um, you have your maintenance bypass, which maintenance can use to do maintenance things. Hashtag just maintenance things. Your acknowledge button exists, so if the ride displays an error, uh, the first thing you have to do, A, to silence the alarm, and B, actually troubleshoot the error, is hit the acknowledge button. You're acknowledging that the error is there. So maintenance can come up and perform next steps. Um... You have your right gates and your left gates controls. Uh, you, as controls, are in charge of closing those. Don't forget. 
Platform up, platform down. That is for morning checks. We do a lot of morning checks in manual mode. Um, it's part of our thing that we have to do every day and part of the thing maintenance has to do. When you come in the morning, you're going to see a thing here that says daily tests must be completed. That's uh, It basically walks you through morning procedures. Um, let's go to the other side of the panel. You have your e-stop lockout. So that is what you do if you need a lockout and go and do locks or you have to lock out for any other reason. Go in the low zones. You have to lock out, tag out. Everybody knows this. And then you just do that. You switch it. And then you put your lock on. If you're doing a mass lockout, use what's called a lockout box. That's if we have to do evacs or anything else. Basically, you put the main lock on the e-stop lockout. You chuck your lock in a... Or, and then you chuck that key into the lockout box. Close the lockout box. It's a big plastic box with lots of holes. And then you put your keys through the holes. And everyone's lock must be off before you are able to remove the rides from the lock. We moved to the lockout box recently. We used to use the hasp, but those kept breaking. So we switched, and we've had much more success with the lockout box. Uh, your e-stop. Uh, same as the ride stop, except also cuts power to the ride. Your e-stop reset. Resets the e-stop. I don't know why I'm going through it in this order. Ride stop. Stops the transfer devices, closes all the brakes, stops the lift. Uh, ride start. <clears throat> Uh, undoes all that. Uh, ride has to be in maintenance mode to be ride starting. Like I said, E-Stop does everything Ride Stop does, but also cuts power to the ride. Uh, lift start. Starts the lift. Someone's gonna have to walk down on the base of the lift. They're gonna pick up the A-phone, they're gonna call you. You're gonna go ready. One, two, three, and you're both gonna hit the lift start. At the same time, until it stops flashing green. Once it stops flashing green, that means the lift has been started. Oh, you're going to test, you're going to hit lift stops, right stops, lift stops, just stop the lift. During morning checks, you're going to end up starting the lift a few times. And we go down here, uh, you have your advance and dispatch buttons. Restraints, locks the restraints. If you press it again, then it'll unlock all of them. It's a five minute cooldown between each two. You can't accidentally hit it twice. Five second, I mean. Uh, your advanced dispatch buttons, two mushrooms, like the enable ones, you have to hold them down all the way until the restraints open. Then you have your HMI enable, which you have to hold down to use the HMI, the human machine interface, which is the touch screen. Um, HMI interface. Um, you have your checks, you have your seats, you have your telemetry, and then you have your other options here. These two will tell you if those modes are on, that will take you to the menu. Run diagnostic will basically be a step in troubleshooting issues. You have your temperature. Um, with winter wheels, uh, minimum run temp is below, uh, negative, is over, anything over negative 10. However, this ride will not run below anything in zero because it goes over 70 miles an hour. And obviously riding it would be extremely painful. And... The temperature is below 20 degrees will require face shields. <clears throat> um, uh, time is the current time. 
Last run time is last run time is the time it takes from the top of the lift to the brakes. Um, if there's any of the trains start to take a lo little longer than usual, it'll display a message across the stop across the top. Let's say train three slowed down, it'll display train three average speed dropping warning. Um, go ahead and call that into Park Ops if you see it. Uh, they might have maintenance come take a look out of it, or come take a look at it. Um, wind. Anything above 35, it, the ride cannot run. Uh, 30, sustained uh, 35 for more than 10 minutes, it cannot run. Uh, train parked in station time, that'll time it's parked in the station. Uh, and the train number will show you the train number of the train that's in there. Um, bypass seat. If a seat is malfunctioned, they'll bypass it. So that you don't have to worry about it up here. It's not reading closed, then you don't have to worry about it. Obviously, you have to tie off the seat first. Bypass pair will bypass the entire pair. Um, enable, that shows the button's pressed. Exit gate, that's these, that's these two right here. And the associate gate is back there. They have sensors. If they're closed, then and all of these are green, then you can send the train. But if one of them's not lighting up, don't forget to announce, hey, check exit gate. Or whatever. Make sure the right off zone. Now, obviously, these are seats. Just got to push it down a little bit. Then push it in one click, and it turns green. Uh, so, uh, when the train parks, <laughs> gates open automatically. Or the gates do not open automatically on this one. Wait. I think they do. Yeah, they do. Um, if on either of these, you hold it to close for more than five seconds, you set the gate to manual. At which point, you gotta open them. Um, and then you gotta open the gates at any point after that. Hold open for five seconds, and then it'll set it to auto mode again. So close five seconds, manual, left five seconds, auto. Uh -oh. So that's if you need to keep gates closed for any reason. But you don't actually have to hold the gates, set it to manual at all. Um, after the train parks, after those trains open, quickly hold both sides to close, and then they won't open. They'll keep the gates closed. Um, that's also like a trick on some B&Ms that can keep the restraints closed. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so once the train parks, it's going to open automatically, you're going to close the gates yourself, and then you're going to hit restraints. So lock the restraints, everyone's going to do the checks, awesome, awesome, awesome. If you see two high clears, you're going to do your scan, and you're going to say all clear, and you're going to hold down these mushroom buttons until the restraints open again. Um, so yeah, after this train leaves, take over, we'll do a few cycles. It has been a day, hasn't it? Oh, 
All clear. All right. Go ahead and slide on in there. It's your time. Welcome to my domain. Step through the open gates. Please loosely choose in the shootings and take your seat. Right. Your All right. Go ahead and close the gates. Get restraints. All right. You don't want to their safe zone. Ready to put out their clears. All clear. Push those. Holding them. All right, you can go ahead and let go of the button. It's your time. Welcome to my domain. All right, everyone's coming in. Please loosely choose in the shootings and take your seat. Riders waiting to board, please stand. And close the gates. Restraints. Hold the butterfly harness inward first, as far as it will go, and fasten your safety belt. Then, hold the harness down as far as it will go. One of my minions will be around to assist you shortly. Don't forget to look down these corners to make sure the gates are closed and everyone's in their safe zone. Alright, it's there, it's there. All clear. Push these. One more cycle. His safe zone, he's in his. All clear. We went out that side last time, I think. All right, we hand it back. Let's go out this way. All right, let's go out this way. Let's do our final thoughts. 
So, Flame and Fury. Probably not as complicated as you thought it was going to be. It's just got a lot to it. So, uh... What was it? Really not that difficult. s and Operating their rides is a lot like operating B&M's. It's pretty simple, really. And I know the restraints are complicated, but it's got to think out, up, belt every time. It's all right there in front of you. Pretty user friendly. This is one of the most sought after rides, but given the popularity increase at night, you might be in for some late nights if you're working this. Um, most of the time, during the off week days, the line averages around 15 minutes. But like I said, during hot weekends, this can easily fill up its queue. It's a popular ride, as it should be. <sighs> Anywho, uh, thanks for watching. I've had this ride in mind ever since I first rode X2 in 2015, and to see it finally come to life is pretty spectacular, honestly. So, uh, y'all take care, and I will see you in the next Ride Up video. Peace out.